Nandini stood at the garden gate of Lata Mandapam and clapped her hand three times. She couldn't tell if it was the line of fear or the dark shadow of the trees that was etched on her face. In the garden for a short distance we could see huge oak trees and vines entwined around them. There was only darkness beyond. The wizard came out from behind a tree, cutting through the darkness and pulling away the vines. Nandini went and sat on her pushpa couch. Her beautiful face was now calm. The magician Lada entered the hall. The golden light of the lamp fell on his face. It's a face you've already seen. Who is he yes? He was one of the men who gathered at Tirupuram PM school in the middle of the night. He who poured gold coins out of his bag. Kill the Alvarkadian immediately on sight. This is Ravidasan who told others that. As soon as he arrived, anger boiled over his face. His feline eyes flashed with fury when he saw Nandini sitting meekly on the flower bed. Sitting on the board in front of the couch, staring at Nandini, he recited some mantras saying Hum Hrim Hram. Bhagwati. Shakti. Shandaki Silvery. Enough. Stop. The nurse seems to have fallen asleep sitting on the doorstep. Say what needs to be said quickly. He has entered the castle. Said Nandini. Adi Patejai. Ravi Dasan said, sounding like a cobra hissing. Who did you mean? Nandini asked meekly. Thank you bad Nandini. I lay Yerani of Pavur. You. Ravi Dasan pointed at her with one finger. Nandini was silent. Girl. It seems you have forgotten some incidents that should be remembered. Let me remind you of them, said Ravi Dasan. What's the old story now? said Nandini. Ravi Dasan said, Why are you asking me now? I will tell you, first remember and let me know later. Nandini let out a sigh and turned away as if she thought it was useless to stop him. The people wanted to burn you alive in the burning wreckage leaving Jewel. Let the fire burn a little longer, said one of them. Leaving you there, the men individually took a terrible vow. You were listening to it. Your mouth was closed, but your eyes were not closed, ears are not blocked. So you were watching and listening. They all approached you after taking their vows. You tried to signal something with your bound hands, who had been idle till then. You rolled your eyes and frowned as you woke up. One of them said does she want to say something? He said. It will be an old story, throw it in the wreckage, said another. No. Let's hear what she says before putting it in the fire. Take the cloth from your mouth, said another. Because he himself became their leader, they took the cloth from your mouth. Do you remember what you said then, girl? Ravi Dasan asked and stopped. Nandini did not reply, don't look back at him. Her countenance showed the disgust and panic that resided in her chest and at the same time the determination of the terrible Sankalpa. Two drops of tears fell from her dark eyes. Woman! You say you won't talk. Don't. I'll tell you that too. You said you were going to take revenge like those men. You swore you had more reason to take revenge than they did. You said you'd use your beauty and grace for that. You'd help them as much as you could. You said. You swore that you had decided to give up your life after fulfilling the vow. Others did not believe you. But I believed. I believed and prevented you from being put in the fire. I saved your life. Do you remember all this? Ravi Dasan said and stopped. Nandini turned slightly and looked at him. Are you asking me if I have a memory? I have written all that in my chest as if written by fire. She said. You swore to help us in this palace. Is all this true or not? Asked Ravi Dasan and stopped. All this is true, who said no? Why do you return it? Now tell me what you came for. Said Nandini. No, girl. You do not remember. You have forgotten everything. You wept in the comfort of Palvur Palace and forgot your vows. You drank wine, made ornaments, slept on a silk mattress on the couch of Saprakuta, and travelled in an ivory palanquin, you queen. 
How do you have old memories? Si Chi. Who wants this couch and mattress and trinkets? Do I live for these trifles? Not at all. Or you seem mesmerized by the beautiful speech of a passing youth. Perhaps you have forgotten your old revenge in your new ink. Nandini was a little confused. Dealing with it immediately, lie. Total lie. She said. If that's false, why didn't I send your nurse to the usual place when I told you earlier that I would be here today? I was just going to send it. Another person climbed the ladder you had. That stupid woman brought him thinking it was you. Is it my fault? Whose fault was it? In a moment my life would have been in danger. The fort guards who had come in search of the youth were about to seize me. I was drenched till I suffocated in a pond in the forest near this palace, and escaped after they had gone. I came dripping wet. You deserve it. You washed away the sin of doubting me with that dip. Girl. Tell me the truth. Aren't you swooning over that boy's beauty? Chi Chi. What is this word? Does anyone talk about the beauty of boys? It is in this shameless Chola country that they celebrate kingly handsome. Isn't the beauty of boys the scars of war? Well said, if you say this truly, what did the young wayfarer come here for? I told you earlier that Vesuki brought him thinking it was you. Why did you give him your signet ring when you didn't even give it to me? I gave it to bring him here to talk. Now I'm going to take the ring from him. Why did you bring him? What have you been doing with him all this time? I was negotiating with him in view of an important gain. He would be of great advantage in accomplishing our purpose. Adi Badaki. Have you finally revealed your girlish wits? To some unknown youth our secret. Why do you fret in vain? I told him nothing. I learned the secret from him. What have you got? He is taking the straw from Kanchi to the old house. The woman in the old house is taking it to the tiger and he showed it to me. I was telling him to bring me the other old house that she was giving me. By then you had arrived. It has become straw, it has become pen. What use is all this to us? That's the flow of your knowledge. We are fasting to wipe out the tiger clan. But you are thinking only of male tigers. You have forgotten that even a female tigress can grow a clan. Not only that, but who do you think is ruling this Chola kingdom now? An old man who is weak and paralyzed on a sick bed? Even in Kanchi. Princes in Sri Lanka too. No. It's the official who is privileged to have you as queen. The world knows it. That's wrong too. The world thinks so, this old man thinks so and is deceived. You are also under the same deception. In fact, the tigress in the old room rules this kingdom. That harlot from inside the palace tries to sway everyone by pulling the sutra rope. I will suppress her sting. That's why I use this youth I'm going to take it. Ravi Dasan's face showed signs of surprise and respect. You are a great handmaiden, no doubt, but how can you be sure that all this is true? How can you be trusted? He said. I entrust the boy to you. Take him out of the fort through the tunnel. Blindfold him. Go near the old manor and wait. Bring him back here with another straw that will give you a squat. If he tries to escape or deceive you, kill him immediately, she said. Nandini. Don't. Don't. You and he must go. The little recluse's men are looking for him inside the castle now, they'll be looking for him outside soon. I'll be in danger if I go with him. Tell me what I've come for. You still haven't told me what happened. It has been arranged for people to go to Kanchi and Sri Lanka. It is very difficult for those going to Sri Lanka. They have to behave very skillfully there. What do you want me to do with that? Do you want more gold? Is there no limit to your gold? The gold is not for our own use, it is to complete the task. Then why have we left you here? Chola gold coin is of no use to those going to Ceylon, it is better to have Ceylon gold. Why is it taking so long to tell me this? I already have it before you ask, said Nandini, 
crouching under the couch she was on. She took a bag and handed it to Ravi Dasan. This is a lot of Sri Lankan gold coins. Take it. It's time for him to come. She said. As Ravi Dasan took the bag and left, he said, wait a minute. At least take that boy outside the fort and leave him. Then let him take another route. I don't want to give him the tunnel. After saying that she stood up and looked towards the dark mansion. She signalled with her fingers that there was nothing there, she patted her hand lightly, nothing works. She and Ravi Dasan went a short distance along the Lata Mandapam path. They approached the entrance to that huge dark mansion. But Vandiyadeva is missing. He was nowhere to be found. 